Good afternoon, everyone. This is our last session for the 2020 virtual conference. We hope you've enjoyed the conference and what we were able to offer to you this year. Uh, we especially look forward to seeing you in person next year at the Eaglewood Resort, June 25, 25th through June 27th. This session is the COVID-19 Assistance Program. Uh, Retrofin has been gracious enough to create this fund uh, for the Luca Dystrophy families uh, suffering loss because of COVID-19. The thing I want, really want to do is especially thank Retrofin for funding this uh, initiative, but also to thank them for all the work that they've done uh, supporting the ULF over the past several years. Uh, they've been a key part in helping us create a conference that has been robust and informational. And we thank them for all the hard work that they've done and, and helped us uh, create a quality product. Uh, what I would like to do right at this moment is to introduce Eve Dreyer. She is the head executive director for patient advocacy for Retrofin. And Eve has been uh, working with me for the last eight to nine months and since she took over this space and so uh, i appreciate all that she's done and when i have a question uh i call her and she makes things happen so i will quit talking i will just introduce eve and i will let her tell you a little bit about the retrofins program and then we can move on to the next part eve Okay, thank you, Bob. And it's not you who should be thanking us. I mean, we thank you and your board and John Wolf, and in fact, all of the patients and families that participated in the conference and that share the information so readily from one family to another. If it weren't for all of you, then there wouldn't be the available information. And most importantly, there wouldn't be the hope that you have in terms of achieving the best possible future for yourselves, your children, whoever in your family you're you know, working with. So thank you for inviting me. You know, it's it's really odd that in the past three or four months, one of the, the silver linings, if there could be any silver lining to COVID, is that um, we were able to develop, you know, just even a warmer, closer relationship with the heads of our advocacy groups, foremost amongst them, the United Leuka Dystrophy Foundation. And it just gave us an opportunity to pick up the phone and speak regularly. We scheduled COVID community conversations when we had all of our advocacy leaders on the phone, sharing their concerns, sharing collaborative opportunities to work together on various initiatives. And, you know, basically all of us have become partners together. And it's it's been a, a very gratifying time if we had to be at home, at least we were at home and in close contact with one another and knowing that there were still ways that through Bob and the board and other members of the organization, you know, we were able to connect with you families and patients and to provide whatever support. So when, um, when COVID first sent us all home with our, you know, doors closed and social distancing, um, you know, we, we realized that what we were going through as most of us relatively healthy, you know, families was exponentially more high pressure for those who are dealing with a rare disease. Um, and especially those of you in the Luca dystrophy area, you know, where you're to the greatest extent, I would imagine those of you on the call are families and parents of children dealing with it or young adults who are dealing with it. So we knew there were things we had to do and had to do quickly. The first thing we did was call our leaders together for a community conversation. And for over two hours, we, together with our CEO, listened to what the needs were in the community. And when that two hour call, and I think actually it almost ran into um, two hours and 45 minutes, you know, we knew that first and foremost, there was gonna be the need for some financial assistance. So in record time, I have to say that our board of directors, our executive team, our CEO, it, it took no convincing at all to um, realize that the first step needed to be to put together a um, COVID assistance fund. So we were able to do that by very early April, um, spoke to all of our leaders, asked them what they needed, and we were able to get that approved by the CEO, Eric Dubay, and um, by the end of 
the end of April, maybe the beginning of, of, of May, because our campus was also closed and our um, checks payable were closed, but they got into our campus and they ran the checks and each one of our organizations, and there are 14 organizations that we support in the, um, in the uh, bioacid um, synthesis disorder space and in nephrology, rare nephrology, and also in diversity. Um, we were able to get the dollars out to the organizations. There were you know, no limitations placed. Anything that the organizations felt that they most needed to use the dollars for, um, they had absolute you know, you know, free freedom to do it with. And that's what was the decision by the board of your organization was that these dollars were going to be used for individual grants for individual families, you know, many of whom have dealt with job losses, some cases, and I hope not too many of you have actually dealt with coping through a COVID diagnosis. You've had children home, you've had to provide resources to continue education. So we wanted to provide these dollars really with you know, no caveat at all, you know, however they wanted to be used. And that's exactly what you know, Bob and the board decided to do. Um, you know, other organizations actually had to use the money to keep the lights on, keep their doors open, to keep a staff member paid. But um, in this case, with your organization, the dollars are being made available, and Bob's going to talk about you and talk about how um, in a few moments. The one other thing that I wanted to mention, um, and we'll you know be able to communicate more with Bob about this in the coming weeks. We actually have um, an advocacy leadership call on Tuesday, and Bob is going to be leading one of the sessions there. We'll have 14 of our national leaders from different advocacy groups. And what's really um, bubbled up to the top as a very significant concern of almost every organization is the challenges of diversity, how you reach out and ensure that those in the leukodystrophy community who are of color, of different economic or um, language background, have geographical barriers, that everyone has access to the right kind of care to achieve a diagnosis, find the right kind of treatment, where a trial is appropriate, identify trial opportunity. So I, I know from um, another leader who was um, listening in yesterday that there was a wonderful program about diversity in leukodystrophy diagnoses. So that's uh, an especially um, important area to us. So, you know, I would just ask your community for your help. You know, if there are, are individuals that you're aware of who haven't been involved with the, uh, the uh, leukodystrophy foundation and you can bring them in, you can help give them more support along their path, that will be wonderful. And we're also looking in 2021 to help support all of our organizations to expand their outreach to communities of color and other disparities. So um, that's really all I wanted to share today. It's a Saturday afternoon. It's uh, you know close to the end of the day. Of what at least on the East Coast right now is a lovely you know, day with the sun shining by and large. So um, I you know, thank Bob for inviting me to speak for a few moments. And, you know, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Thank you. All right, very good. Thank you, Eve. Uh, this support level is really great to have and we're happy that we're able to uh, uh, help the community out uh, going forward. Uh, what I'm planning on doing uh, with this session is to run you through our website and show you what uh, what you need to do on the, on the website to get your application into us as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, our deadline will be uh, July 4th for these applications. I know we've got applications that are already there. So uh, if we can go ahead and pop the website up, I will go ahead and start uh, going through the session here. Let's see. All right. First thing we need to do is just go to our home page and then we head over here to our resources tab. Uh, right below there, right on top is financial assistance. So we've made this very easy for you to find and we just go over to the COVID 19 relief fund grants and we click on that uh, 
sheet right there. Uh, now to kind of go through here, I'll just kind of go through a little bit. Uh, obviously, Retrofin has generously established this relief fund, and so we hope to provide assistance to our affected families that are struggling with essential expenses as a result of job loss because of COVID-19. We are planning on $500 grants uh, to send out, and these grants are not anything that needs to be repaid. So. Each grant application will be uh, reviewed by indiv reviewed individually by the committee on, of our board on a weekly basis, and the funds distribution will occur after the fourth of July. So, our eligibility for the grants um, requires, first of all, proof of U.S. residency. Uh, citizenship is not required, but we're only able to grant funds to U.S. residents and funds will be sent via written check. Uh, proof of leukodystrophy diagnosis, a uh, letter from a physician, test results with diagnosis, et cetera, uh, are items that you can send in. Uh, and then we, we need to be able to validate these from your doctor's offices. Uh, we also would like to have a proof of job losses uh, because of COVID-19. So if you can give us some paperwork to uh, verify that, that will be very helpful. One thing that I really want to bring up to you is please do not include social security numbers when submitting your documents. This is very important. Uh, we don't want that information and we don't want to be responsible for that information. So please do not give us social security numbers. If it happens to be on the documentation, please black it out before you send it in. So uh, we just want to make sure that you, everybody knows that uh, anything you share with us will not go outside of the ULF. Uh, no materials will be sh shared with anyone else and it's only going to be used to reference uh, for the application for the financial relief. So we just, the key for the documentation is we wanna make sure the funds are going to leukodystrophy families, especially those that are in the most need uh, and have a responsibility to our donors to make sure these funds are dispersed ethically. So we wanna make sure that it's not somebody that happens to see, see this and link on, and they're just going through the websites and they're not even a leukodystrophy family. We wanna make sure that they are leukodystrophy related before we go that. So as we kind of go through there, any questions or concerns can be directed to Keely Hag. She's our director of operations at Keely at ULF.org. And the key thing I would wanna re-remind you is July 4th, which is next week, is the deadline for these. So please get these in as soon as you can. When you get to this page, you will see the apply now button. You just need to click on that uh, button and this will pop up the uh, form for you to fill out. So we talked talk about Retrofit again, supporting this and what we were doing and all of it. Everything that I just told you is right here. So make sure that you uh, pay attention to it. So all you have to do down here is just go to put your name in and then you can, and I, I like how this auto fills in. I can just do one click and I can, my email, home address and everything is there. Then you can, uh, what kind of, all these are required answers. So what type of uh, dystrophy in our, my case, it's ALD. Uh, then we can just put, lost my job and need funds uh, for uh, medicine. So that, that's type of thing, but whatever your individual case would be, that's what we need to do. Uh, then you can get on file, just click on a file and you can, uh, select a file from your device, click on it, insert it, and then come out here. And then the next one is your uh, unemployment information. And you can put that file 
in there and you're ready to go and then you can hit submit. So that's uh, a fairly simple uh, way that uh, we can get the information we need from you and then uh, uh, we wanna get these out as soon as possible after the 4th of July. So I would say within a couple of weeks as we go through these awards, we should be in good shape. So that is uh, kind of the quick uh, nutshell. And obviously, if you have questions, please uh, type those into the Q&A box, chat box, and we'll try and get some of these questions answered for you. Uh, this isn't a long session, but we sure want to help you uh, get some funds to help support you in this time of need because we with ULF realize as well that it's a definite challenge and uh, anything that we can facilitate here, uh, that's our goal. So I think uh, that's kind of it. I can go ahead and stop the sharing of this tab and then we can uh, uh, move to the next phase of this uh, session. All right, I see I'm I see I'm back. So uh, Hi, Hank here, Director of Operations for the ULF. And I just want to echo Bob uh, a couple of things that Bob said in his uh, demonstration is just that uh, yes, we are asking for some very sensitive information, uh, but we are asking for it for a very good reason. We simply want to ensure that the funds that we have been so graciously given by given to us by Retrofin are used ethically and that they are going to families that are uh, affected by leukodystrophy um, and that the families who have experienced job loss because of the COVID-19 pandemic are the first ones at the top of our list to receive that funding. So uh, I have had some questions uh, on other platforms. A couple of people on Facebook have reached out asking why we uh, need address verification of a US address. Um, and at this point, that is simply because uh, wire transfers are very expensive for us to send. And so we want to ensure that the full amount that has been given to us is actually going to families and is not going to banking fees. So, uh, but with that being said, if you are international and you would like to apply for this, um, please go ahead and apply anyway, because if we can prove that we do have significant international uh, need, we can we can reconsider on our end and we can look for additional funding and we can build a budget that includes banking fees so that we can begin to send financial funding overseas as well. So if you uh, still would like to apply being an international person, uh, please do, please submit the, uh, the verification that we are asking for in terms of proof of leukodystrophy. Um, and like I said, we will, we will turn around and we will consider it and try our best to make sure that we are offering as much support to uh, all of the leukodystrophy community as we can. Very good. Um, does anyone having some comments that they would like uh, for us to answer here to this afternoon since we do have this opportunity and uh, we'd love to help you out if you got any concerns that we're not aware of. Keely, have you had any questions coming in as far as uh, those that have already uh, had some questions with the process or has it been pretty self-explanatory? Um, I think it's been pretty self-explanatory, but uh, we have seen where someone um, in terms of proving job loss, they simply submitted a pay stub, which isn't necessarily proof of job loss. So, um, and again, you know, as we kind of start to move forward, uh, you know, I want to err on the side of apply anyway, <laughs> even if you necessarily haven't had um, 
uh, job loss or if you've even just gotten your your hours cut um, and you're experiencing more financial burden, uh, please go ahead and apply anyway. Just be sure that you're explaining the situation in the application so that we know what we're looking for um, and we know what is going on so that we can, uh, again, it's all a matter of we want to make sure we're prioritizing people's needs and obviously someone that got their hours cut is in a slightly better situation than someone that lost their job entirely. So uh, we, we simply need that verification to help us prioritize the people who are receiving the funds. But uh, even if you feel that you don't necessarily exactly fit the criteria, or um, even if you are in the camp of, you know, there might be other families who need it more desperately than me, please apply anyway. Um, we appreciate people holding back and applying that feel that maybe other families do need it more and that, and that may be true. But at the same time, uh, as I've witnessed with the leukodystrophy community, at least everyone tends to think that other people have it worse than them. And that isn't always necessarily the case. So err on the side of apply anyway, and we will let you know. Um, and by all means, do not hesitate to reach out with any questions. I'm happy to answer and I'm happy to talk to you about um, about the application process. Uh, if you have any privacy concerns, please reach out. We want to work through this. We want to give the money to you. Um, so just reach out so that we can work out and figure out a way to make, uh, to make you comfortable um, and make sure that we're able to disperse these funds that we've been so graciously given. I think one of the things that we do want to try and do is get this out this uh, video especially out within the community through our Facebook, social media as quick as we can so that people uh, will have this that they can look at too and refer to it. And that might help us out uh, as our people are curious, maybe aren't able to be on this uh, session today. So uh, we will get that out as quick as we can. Absolutely. And there will be a specialized e-blast going out, uh, I believe, tomorrow afternoon is when we have it scheduled to go out. Um, and if I'm able to, I will attach this video to that email as well. <laughs> that sounds perfect. That sounds perfect. So I'm not seeing any other questions right now that have come into the chat session. Um, I guess I want to just, you know, especially th say a special thank you to Eve for uh, being on the call today and talking about the retrofit perspective on the COVID-19. And uh, you also, everybody kind of gets a little bit of an idea of what retrofit is trying to do, uh, working not only through this pandemic, but the workload that they're trying to accomplish as well. So it's uh, been uh, appreciated what, the efforts that they've stepped up and are trying to help everyone as we move forward. So this has been very key. So I, I thank Eve, especially for coming on and taking the time out of her day. And unfortunately we can't be together in person, but hopefully we can, uh, <laughs> I, I think you're still on mute, Eve. <laughs> there. So, I said, I said, I, it's been, I mean, coming to this meeting in person has been on my calendar since last fall. So I'm really sorry that it didn't happen, but I'll look forward to next year. And, um, then I wish all of you the best and, you know, we're going to continue to look about, oh, we're going to take a look at how the pandemic continues to impact families, Bob, and work with you and the other leaders to identify if there are ways that we can help. So I know that this is not one and done. This has been, um, you know, and, and world impacting um, situation. So, you know, consider us part of your team, please. We do, and we really appreciate that. Uh, I think we'll probably get ready to close this off. Uh, the first thing I want to do is obviously this is our last session uh, for the week. The last three days have flown by, and it seems like we just started, and here we're already on Saturday afternoon, late in the day. So, I want to say a special thank you for the attendees uh, that have come to be part of this uh, conference and also to our presenters that have taken their time to share their uh, 
uh, knowledge with you. And I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to all of our sponsors that have helped us put this event on. And uh, with their continued support, we will also uh, see uh, more benefits as we go on throughout, throughout the year. And as we work, uh, we've got a lot of programs that we're working on starting. So I know the support of these companies will be instrumental in the success of what we are trying to do as a foundation with our new ULF 2.0. So thank you all for taking your time to be a part of this uh, conference. And we look forward to uh, seeing everyone in person next June and at the Eaglewood Resort in Chicago. So with that, thank you all very much.